Ramadan in particular, which is, of course, a more uh, contemporary for us today uh, in the first Friday in Ramadan. What is the role of Ramadan in this spiritual rejuvenation and purification? First of all, as it well known, the fasting of Ramadan is one of the pillars. It is the fourth pillar of Islam. And it is a mandatory duty on every adult, sane, able Muslim. No wonder the Prophet warned us against belittling the importance of Ramadan and take it as something that's not really that significant and important. In fact, in one hadith, he said that a person who deliberately break the fast, even of one single day in Ramadan, without a legitimate sharia excuse, not the excuse that we create, legitimate sharia excuse, he may not be able to make up for that day even if he fast the rest of his life. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have to make qada. He should do it. But in the spiritual sense, there is a lot, a lot missed by deliberately breaking the fast, even if the person has to go through some difficulty, but not excessive, nothing that laugh like threatening or undue difficulty. The fasting of Ramadan also should be regarded as not a matter of ritual, abstaining only from food and drink and a few other things from dawn to sunset. Yes, that's required. But the deeper meaning, as the Prophet ﷺ and as the Quran teaches us, is beyond abstaining from food and drink. It's abstaining from evil. Even in the Quran itself, as mentioned earlier, why fasting was prescribed to, on us and made a mandatory duty. It doesn't say so that you may feel hungry or thirsty, but to achieve that quality of taqwa, feeling the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's one meaning. Taqwa also means avoiding anything that displeases Allah. Taqwa is to try to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only out of fear, not only out of reward, these are relevant indeed, but above all, out of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledgement of His countless blessings and favors upon us. Of the prerequisites of this taqwa is to avoid all vices. As the Prophet sallallahu told us in more than one hadith, let's take one, he says, any person who does not abstain from falsehood in words and deeds or actions, Allah has no need for him or her to abstain from their food and drink. In another hadith, some people, he says some people benefit nothing from their fasting except hunger and thirst. One of the prerequisites of this taqwa also, heeding Allah, is to admit humbly that no matter how much good we try to do and how much evil we try to avoid, we fall far short of the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No wonder Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is the most safwa, the most selective Allah of any human being who ever treated this earth to seek forgiveness of Allah. That some polemicists misunderstood to say, oh, maybe he was a sinful person, then he, that's Allah ordered him to, to make his self-far. And the same people who say that, sometimes when they read the Lord's Prayer, when Prophet Isa alayhi salam, even in their own books, says, forgive us our sins or our trespasses as we forgive others their trespasses. Prophet Isa alayhi salam himself, say, oh Allah, forgive us, means me and all others our trespasses. He didn't say everybody except me. People create certain things that try to lift the human beings into the level of divinity. Whereas prophets are the best example of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we find both in the Quran and even in some of the scriptures before us. Scripture before us say that prophets after prophet bow down, put their heads on the ground in humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, admitting their shortcoming as human beings. And the same thing we find in the Quran also. Allah inspired all these prophets, all of them. No exception. To do good deeds and to pray and prayer is humility. And humility that means I no matter what I do, I fall short of the glory of Allah One of the most profound evidence that 
seeking forgiveness is, is not that you are bad or anything. On the contrary, because we are required to make istighfar, as you know, after what? After salah. Is salah a sin? Performing salah the most valuable and intense spiritual experience. Is that a sin? So istighfar is not only from sin. Why do you say astaghfirullah after salah? Why the Prophet said astaghfirullah? It means that if we compare whatever good we do as humans with the utter glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His utter and absolute perfection that's only His, we fall short. So we seek forgiveness of Allah for any shortcoming even in doing our ibadah. We can also achieve that spiritual rejuvenation in Ramadan which is a precious opportunity to get closer to the Qur'an, the Book of Allah, to recite, listen to, and more importantly, reflect on its ayahs. This tazkiyah, purification, and spiritual rejuvenation in Ramadan does not only mean strengthening relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or with His Prophet and His Book, even though this is the cornerstone and the basis of all goodness, but it also teaches us to relate and improve our relationship with other human beings. Whether in the context of the family, the community, society, but humanity at large. In fact, we should remember that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed on people before you, it means that we should be open also to people of other faith communities. Their fasting might be different, different times, different methods. But this ayah specifying and highlighting that the basic farida, duty of fasting, as a means of a spiritual rejuvenation is something that also other prophets taught their followers. Whether it remained as is or people changed, it doesn't matter. That still, there is a common denominator with people of other faith communities as well. And we need to improve our relationship with them. And I'm very happy that throughout the continent today, and perhaps in Europe, but most more so in, in the continental uh, North America. There have been various programs of inviting people, inviting their neighbors to share a meal, bringing some of them to community iftar, uh, to, in universities, challenging their fellow students to experiment fasting one day and then invite them for breakfast. These are all things also that provide an opportunity to improve relationship also beyond even the Muslim community with other people uh, of faith. Now, the best thing perhaps, having covered this in a very brief and probably an adequate manner, is to remember the ayah in the Quran that appears immediately after the key ayat in the Quran pertaining to fasting. And it's a beautiful ending. Reminds us and sum up all of this question of a spiritual rejuvenation and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِ الْتَيْءِ Addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When my servants ask you, meaning, O oh Muhammad, concerning me, then certainly I am near to them. He's near to everyone who, who seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Niqari, I respond to everyone who calls upon me. Let them respond to my call and accept my guidance that they may achieve guidance and felicity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who remember Allah who take advantage of Ramadan, who try their best to be among those whose prayer is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make us among all those who are guided and to make this blessed month a month of goodness, charity and ample blessing for all of us. Amen.